invite you to take your Bibles tonight and let's turn to the book of Joshua in chapter number 13 and 14. Mostly going to be in chapter number 14, but I am going to refer to something that's going on, on there in chapter 13. Joshua chapter number 13 and 14. At this point, we find that the wars of Canaan were, for the most part, over. Israel had found temporary rest in the promised land, even though there was still much land to be possessed, and the enemy had not yet been totally eradicated. In fact, in uh, chapter number 13, you know, we, we saw in chapter number 12, in chapter number 11, excuse me, last week, the last verse of chapter number 11 says that the land rested from war. The chapters 13 and 14 of Joshua deal with the distribution of the land to the various tribes. And as we read in the 14th chapter, we find here a familiar name uh, that we've heard, and uh, the name Caleb. Uh, Caleb was a great man of God. Uh, God used uh, because of his faith, him and Joshua, the two that had faith in the Lord back when they were... Uh, wanting to go into the land to begin with. Caleb was part of Israel when they had left Egypt. He was there when the Lord divided the waters of the Red Sea. And as a matter of fact, he was one of the 12 spies that had gone in to survey the promised land. And uh, more than that, he and Joshua were the only two who believed God and recommended that Israel press forward. But as a whole, uh, everybody said, no, we can't do that. And uh, consequently, they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years until all the unbelievers perished. There they, they, they chose not to believe in the Lord. And, you know, that's a great picture of the, how uh, a defeated New Testament believer is as well. You know, God saves us and promises us that we can have a life of victory and spiritual joy. But rather than claim what is rightfully ours, you know, we can have things like peace and joy fellowship, power, and even the glory of God being manifested through our lives. Uh, but yet many choose to live in a spiritual wilderness, defeated and depressed. And that's not what God would have for us. God wants us to live in victory. We sang the song tonight, Victory in Jesus. The reason why I picked that, because the Lord would have us to live in victory. And we need to understand that Caleb, at this point where we're going to read that, he was 85 years old, but he had not forgotten the promises of God that he uh, God had given to him back during the days of Moses and Caleb is going to picture the, the believer who is willing to pay the price he's willing to fight the battles he is willing to win, win the victory that God had waiting for him and I think that you know there's one word that really describes Caleb and that's what we want to look at tonight he was wholehearted I'm going to talk about being wholehearted tonight. Let's take a look at Joshua chapter number 14 and verses 6 through 15 here. Joshua 14, verse number 6. It says, Then the children of Judah came uh, unto Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, and the Kenizzite uh, said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and thee in Kadesh Barnea. Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to espy out the land, and I brought him word again as it was in my heart. Um, nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the uh, heart of the people melt. But notice this next phrase here. He says, But I wholly followed the Lord, my God. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance, and thy children's forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord, my God. There's the phrase again. And now behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, as he said these forty and five years, talking about the 40 years of, uh, of wandering in the wilderness and the five years of conquest that have taken place is what the 45 years makes up. And 
he said here, uh, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old. Eighty-five. Okay? As, as yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now for, for war, both to go out and to come in. And now therefore give me this mountain whereof the Lord spake in that day, for thou hast heard in that day how the Anakims were there, and that the cities were great and fenced. If so be uh, the Lord will be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him and gave unto Caleb the son of Jephunneh Hebron for inheritance. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb the son of Jephunneh uh, the Kenezite unto this day because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. There it is again. And the name of Hebron uh, was, uh, before was Kerjath Arba, which Arba was a great man among the Anakims and the, the land had rest from war. And we see uh, here uh, Caleb's wholehearted commitment. The first key to Caleb's success was that God had all of Caleb that there was. Yeah. You know, when we got saved, we got all of God that we were going to get. The question is, does God have all, have all of us? You know, Think, are we filled with the Holy Spirit? Is this, is, does He have control? We see the repeated phrase here that He wholly followed the Lord. And this is said about Caleb. There, there are six times you'll find in the Old Testament where it's mentioned that He wholly followed the Lord. We saw three of them here. It's a phrase that means to, to close the gap or to draw near. Think about it. To close the gap or to draw near. Actually, it is a phrase used by hunters to refer to they're closing the gap between themselves and their prey. Those of you that are hunters, you've been out there and you want to get close. You Maybe you, uh, I was a squirrel hunter. And when I would hear squirrels, I would, I would want to get close to those squirrels so I could get a good shot. And it's a draw, that's that what word means, draw, to draw close, to close the gap or to draw near. It refers to the fact that Caleb was committed to keeping the distance between himself and the Lord at a minimum. And that's, that's good because the Lord, we know in the New Testament, uh, you know, uh, uh, James wrote these words, draw nigh to God and He'll do what? He'll draw nigh to you. Amen. And Caleb was one of those type. He, he drew, drew near to the Lord, and the Lord uh, blessed him because of that. So in that, he is an example to each of us. Uh, you know, the Lord deserves our all because we belong to Him. We're familiar with 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19 and 20. that says, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, for you are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. We belong to God, and so we ought to wholly follow the Lord, haven't we? Caleb's commitment to God was based upon his confidence in the Word of God. He remembered what God had said to him through his servant Moses. That's what he said there in verse number 9 and verse number 10. He had cherished, no doubt, had cherished that promise through the 40 years of wandering as well as during the, the years of battle, he had no doubt in his mind that he was going to see the fulfillment of what God promised him and what uh, uh, he had in front of him. Uh, through it all, he hadn't forgot what God had promised, and now he's ready to receive the blessings of God. So Caleb's commitment should remind us of what our commitment should be. Our commitment needs to be wholehearted as well. Amen. May God help us to be wholehearted in our commitment to Him. We need to give ourselves totally to God and be wholehearted in our commitment to the Lord and to His will. We need to trust in the Lord's promises to us just as Caleb did. Caleb believed God. Plain and simple. That's, that's what faith is. Titus 1, 2 uh, talks about you know, our trust in, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. You know, when we talk, talk about our eternal life, that we, you know, we're saved, we're on our way to heaven, uh, 
we can look forward to that with assurance in our hearts, knowing that God doesn't lie. And what He's promised us, He is going to deliver. So we see Caleb's wholehearted commitment. Second of all, we see Caleb's wholehearted confidence. I mean, what was it that gave an 85-year-old Caleb, and I'm just 66, and I'm about to fall apart already, you know. It's like, but he's 85 years old, and he seems not to have uh, been affected very much. Now, you couldn't say the same thing for, for Joshua. Flip, flip back uh, to chapter number 13, verse number 1. It says, now Joshua was old and stricken in years. <laughs> You know, any, any of you feel struck tonight? <laughs> you feel like you've been struck a little bit? Yeah. Uh, well, Joshua was that way. It's believed that Joshua was probably about 100 years old at this point. He had 10 more years. He didn't know how many years he had left. But the, the, he he uh, was 110 years old when he actually passed. But he was, even the Lord told him. Uh, notice verse 1 again. Now, now, Joshua was old and stricken in years, and the Lord said unto him, Thou art old and stricken in years. And there remaineth yet very much land to be possessed. I mean, uh, when God tells you you're old and stricken in years, I guess you are, aren't you? Amen. Uh, well, we see his his uh, Caleb's confidence. Um, at Eighty-five. He, you know, he was going to be a giant killer. Think about that. The the Anakims were giants. We we read that in other places. Uh, as we've been going through Joshua. And uh, um, what what gives an 85-year-old Caleb the idea that he could be a giant killer? His trust in God, faith in God. And, you know, God's going to get to see me through this. You know, faith is not positive thinking. That's not what it is. Faith is not optimism. Faith is not looking on the bright side. We know that Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I mean, faith is more than saying that we believe. It is acting on what we say we believe. Amen? Faith is simply taking God at His Word and acting upon what God says. And that's what we see in the life of Caleb. Faith is never a blind leap, but rather it is a deep, settled conviction that God will do what He has promised. Look at Deuteronomy chapter number 1. Deuteronomy chapter, hold your place there, we're going to be back. okay? But turn to Deuteronomy 1, and I want us to look at two verses here, verse number 35 and 36. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 1, verse number, well let's back up to verse 34. And the Lord heard the voice of your words and was wroth and, and swear, saying, Surely there shall not one of these men of this evil generation see that good land which I swear to give unto your fathers, save Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, that he shall see it. And to him will I give the land that he hath trodden upon. Remember, he went in there and surveyed the land, and he knew what he wanted. He knew what land he wanted. And where he had trod, and he he was one of the ones that believed he could they could go in there and get it, and he says, "I have given thee the land that I was trod upon and to to his children, because he hath there it is there's that phrase he hath wholly followed the Lord, <laughs> uh, and so uh, we see uh, that he had God's promise. Caleb's faith had not wavered over the last forty five years. He had seen the promised land firsthand. He knew what he saw, and I believe for 45 years that that vision had burned in his heart as he wandered through the wilderness, and it burned it's more, uh, more uh, fervently in his heart in the last five years as they were conquering the land. While others complained, Caleb looked forward to the time that he would take and possess what God had promised him. He was able to see beyond his circumstances unto the promises of the Lord. Can I tell you that the Lord still needs people who have been pressed from that same mold and cut from the same cloth? Needs people who just believe God. Just take God at His word. Uh, it takes wholehearted faith to win the spiritual victory and glorify the Lord in one's life. So we see Caleb's wholehearted commitment. We see Caleb's wholehearted confidence. Third, thirdly, we see Caleb's wholehearted courage. Caleb's wholehearted courage. Caleb's commitment led to confidence, and his confidence led 
to courage. Caleb had to scale three great obstacles in his quest for Canaan. Turn to Numbers chapter 13. His first, his first thing that he had to overcome was grasshoppers. Numbers chapter number 13. In order to, to get that land that he trod on there, he saw it, he, he come back, he was ready to go into the land. Uh, and we, we're going to read this. Look at uh, Numbers 13, look at verse number 30. Then Caleb stilled the people to call before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it were men of great stature. In other words, they were giants. And verse 33, there we saw the giants and the sons of Anak. We just read that name in our passage over there in Joshua. The sons of Anak, which come uh, of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. So he had to overcome grasshoppers. Uh, there's always those around us who are convinced that we cannot win the victory. And uh, to, to live for God we will often have means that we're going to have to stand in the minority. And that's what Joshua and Caleb did. They stood in the minority. I mean, there was ten that said, we can't do it. And those two said, hey, all we need to do is go in. God's promised it to us. God will give us the ability to, to go and uh, fulfill what He told us to do. And, uh, of course, uh, they refused to listen to Joshua and Caleb. But, listen, uh, remember that Joshua and Caleb were ready to trust God, enter into and conquer the promised land in the power of God, and uh, we must be like that. We must overcome the grasshoppers that will try to convince us that we cannot live victoriously for the Lord. They saw themselves as grasshoppers in the sight of those people. So he had to overcome grasshoppers. He had to overcome giants. Uh, back in our text, verse number 12. Verse number 12, Joshua 14. <clears throat> And verse number 12 says, Now therefore give me this mountain, where, whereof the Lord spake in that day. For thou hast heard in that day how the Anakims were there, and that the cities were great and fenced. If so be the Lord will be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. Now listen, he hadn't, he hadn't wavered one bit about his ability to overcome the giants. <laughs> uh, I mean, he's got more age on him, 45 years down the road. And he was a young man whenever uh, uh, he first went in there. But he had to overcome giants. Giants are really are a, simply a matter of perspective, aren't they? They are. Uh, the Bible says that Goliath was nine and a half feet tall. There's a few basketball teams that would like to have had Goliath on their team, I'm sure. But David measured him against God. That's what he did. Uh, the Bible says... Uh, that Og, king of Bashan, had to have a bed that was 13 and a half feet long. Well, he made uh, he made Goliath look like a small boy. <laughs> you know, there was some big there was some big big boys that were born back during that time. In verse 15 here by text, Arba is said to have been great among the Anakims, great among the giants. There, um, the, the thing is this: all of us have giants in our lives. I'm talking about things that are bigger than us. That's what a giant is. A giant is something that's bigger than you. And uh, we can't defeat giants ourselves. So we've got two options. We can look at how small we are compared to those giants, and that is the outlook of fear. That's what the people did to begin with there in the book of Numbers. They said, we can't do it. Now you can do that outlook, or you can look at how small those giants are compared to God. And that is the outlook of faith. Amen. You look, you, your faith's in God and say, well, you know, they ain't nothing compared to God. God can well overcome them. And so uh, he had to overcome grasshoppers. He had to overcome giants. And then we said he, he had to overcome gray, some gray hairs. I might imagine he was getting some gray hairs by, by 85 years of age, don't you think? I mean, I'm 66 and i got a head full of them right now. 
But uh, look at verse number 10 and 11 uh, there. And he said, And now, behold, the Lord hath kept me alive. The Lord's kept him alive. He said, These forty years and five years, even since the Lord spake his word unto Moses while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, lo, uh, I am this day four score and five years old. I guess it was happy birthday to him. And yet, uh, I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me, as my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war, uh, both to go out and to come in. Boy, I wish I was as strong as I was when I was 40. Don't you? Don't you wish for that, some of that youthful strength? Well, the Lord would give him that. He'd, he, he, he had to overcome gray hairs. What does this tell us? You know, when God makes a promise, He'll give us the strength to see to its fulfill, full, fulfillment there. Never count God or yourself out. True faith looks beyond the present circumstances and sees the provision of God. But here's the last thing. We not only see Caleb's wholehearted commitment and confidence and courage, but we see Caleb's wholehearted contest. There in verse number 14 and 15 of our text there, uh, he, he did what the, the Lord told him to do. Uh, and, the, and the land had rest from war. Caleb experienced what God had promised. He, he climbed the mountains. He defeated the giants. He claimed his possession. The, the, the name of this, uh, this place that Caleb inherited used to be called Kerjath Arba, which means city of Arba. And Arba was a, a, a giant that was father of Anak. Okay? Its name changed to Hebron, uh, which means community or alliance. And so Caleb refused to quit until he had obtained everything the Lord had for him. His alliance with God gave him his promised inheritance. And uh, that's, what, that's the place to be allied, isn't it? Ally yourself with God. And where, where are you tonight in your personal walk with the Lord? Have you entered into your, the, your victory, or are you still wandering around in the wilderness, struggling day to day? God's promised us a place of peace and power but we must be willing to claim our possessions and it will take us being wholehearted like Caleb. There's a huge difference between a promise and a possession. God promised Israel the land, but they had to go in and possess it. You know? There was something for them to do and go in and possess it was, was their part. God still has victory available for His children. That is His promise. However, that promise must be actively pursued and possessed before it will ever become a reality in our lives. Well, that's our Bible study for this evening. I, and I trust that uh, uh, a look at this will strengthen your faith. Amen. And we'll move on in our study next week, Lord willing.